In this video, we're not really going to get into a lot of the details of how to solve linear equations or quadratic equations. Uh, I just want to set up or introduce um, just what some of the differences are between linear equations and quadratic equations. Linear equations we've studied for some time now, and we're about to move into studying quadratic equations. And I think it'd be helpful just to point out some of the differences, just so you can be prepared as we start solving quadratic equations. So let, let me actually jot down a couple of equations here. We'll, we'll point out some of the differences. Um, if I had a linear equation like, uh, let's say, 2x plus 1 equals negative 9 or something like that. This is something we're very good at solving. Uh, we know that we're supposed to isolate the x by moving everything away from the x, whether it be using subtraction or division or things like that. For instance, we'd subtract 1 and get 2x equals negative 10. And then we would divide both sides by 2 because the x is multiplied by 2. And when the twos cancel, we get x equals negative 5 as our solution. Uh, and I'll point out that there is only one solution. That's interesting as well. But uh, we have these, um, these methods ingrained in our head where you're isolating the variable. You're just pushing everything away to the opposite side of the equal sign using subtraction or division or what have you, and you get your answer. Now, quadratic equations are gonna be much, much different. It's an entirely different approach, and let me illustrate why. Let's say you had, uh, let's say, x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. So this is an equation as an equal sign, but instead of just being linear like this, it actually has a squared term, uh, which makes it a quadratic equation. Well, you see, if you try to solve for x, let's say you try to maybe isolate this x the same way, subtract the 8 and subtract the x squared and divide by negative 6 and do all those sorts of things, your x is actually going to be in terms of x squared because you, you would have to put the x squared on the opposite side from x and that just doesn't make any sense. You're not going to get a numerical answer for x that way. So the approach is dramatically different. Be because you have x's and x squareds, these aren't like terms and so you can't just isolate a, a single one of these guys. So we're going to have to have dramatically different approaches and there are a couple different ways you can do this but to solve this type of equation. And I just want to emphasize the fact that it's very different than solving a linear equation. And not only that, let's actually look at what some of these answers would be. And I'm not gonna go through how I got these answers, but the answers for this one would be two and four. Meaning if you plug in a two, it'll make the um, left side equal zero and make the equation true. And if you plug in four, it'll also make the equation true. So this guy, in fact, has two solutions, which is kind of interesting. Now, why is that? Why do linear equations only have one and quadratic equations sometimes have two? They don't always have two solutions, but, uh, but in this case it does. It's because of the square term right here. And so we just have a lot, uh, a lot of differences be between quadratics and the linear equations that we're comfortable with. Now, what will be the approach for solving quadratic equations? Again, I'm not gonna get into a lot of those details, um, and there are a few different techniques to solve quadratic equations, but one of the techniques uses factoring, and that's why we've been studying factoring so hard over the last few videos. It's been in anticipation of solving quadratic equations using factoring. So anyways, hopefully this light introduction kind of gets your feet wet and, and kind of gets you thinking along along the right lines. Uh, but over the next few videos, we're going to unpack how we solve quadratic equations.